let's learn how to use the Planet Scale database import tool. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Morrison and I'm on the developer education team here at Planet Scale. Today we're going to look at how you can use the database import tool to import your MySQL databases into Planet Scale without causing any downtime to your application. We're going to start off inside of an Ubuntu virtual machine hosted inside of AWS that has a base installation of MySQL installed. We're going to configure all the necessary settings in that MySQL service and then we're going to use the import tool to migrate the data from that database into Planet Scale. Let's take a look. Okay, so on screen, I have a terminal session that is connected to the virtual machine up in AWS as an EC2 instance. And the only thing that is really done at this point is MySQL's installed in the root user has been granted a password so we can sign in using the root user. So we're going to start by doing just that. So I'm typing MySQL and we'll set the username of root and ask for a password. I'll type in the password that I have set up for this account. Hit enter and we're logged into MySQL. Now, just to show you the database we're going to be working with, we'll type in show databases. And the one specifically I'm interested in is the employees database. It is a sample data set that is provided by MySQL in their documentation portal that has been modified slightly to remove foreign key constraints as foreign key constraints are not supported in planet scale. So to give a little more information about the database, I'm going to select it. And then I will type show tables. And we can see these are the tables that we have configured for this specific database. Now let's take a look at the employees table just a bit. I'll type in select count star from employees. And we can see there are over 300,000 rows in that table alone. And if I select star from employees and just limit it to the top 10, this is an example of what these rows look like. Now, before we move on to using the import tool, we'll have to configure the GTID settings for MySQL server, since that is the feature that's used in order to synchronize records between the local MySQL instance and the planet scale database. This video assumes your MySQL infrastructure is not clustered. If you're looking for information on how to configure GTID settings in a clustered environment, I'll leave a link to the MySQL docs in the description of this video. But for the time being, we're going to be working with a standalone MySQL server. It's also worth noting at this point that in order for any of our changes to take place, we will need to restart the MySQL service. You may need to perform these operations within a maintenance window for your organization. Now, there are three very specific global variables we need to check. The first one is bin log format, followed by enforce GTID consistency and then GTID mode. So I'll first check the bin log format with show variables like bin log underscore format. And this is set to row by default, which is the value we need it to be. Now I'll show variables like GTID just to see everything that is related to the GTID settings. And we can see there are nine settings that are returned. However, the two we are very interested in is this enforced GTID consistency, which needs to be set to on, and then the GTID mode, which also needs to be set to on. So in order to update these settings, I'm actually going to exit out of the MySQL client on this local machine, and then I'm going to edit the MySQL service configuration file. So I'll type in sudo nano etsy forward slash MySQL slash MySQL.conf.d forward slash MySQLD.cnf. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, the two settings specifically we're looking at adding is GTID underscore mode is going to be equal to on and then enforce hyphen GTID hyphen consistency is also going to be equal to on. I'm going to save this file and then restart the MySQL service. So we'll type in sudo system CTL restart MySQL and hit enter. Since we got no error output, that means the service was properly restarted. Let's log back into MySQL using our root user. And let's check those settings one more time. So I will just use the up arrow key to get back to my show variables like GTID and hit enter. And we can see enforce GTID consistency is set to on as well as the GTID mode is set to on. Now we need to configure a dedicated user with the right permissions needed so planet scale can properly import the database. So I'm going to type in create user. We're going to create a user named migration underscore user. And we want to be able to allow this user to log in from anywhere. So we're going to use the wildcard as far as the host address. And that's going to use a password. So I'll type identified 
buy, and then we'll type in our super secret secure password. And that created the user. Now we're going to set up the necessary global permissions in order to allow this user to configure the proper replication settings. So I'll say grant process replication slave and replication client on the entire database. So star dot star to migration underscore user at our wildcard address. Now I'll need to grant the proper permissions for the user to access the database it needs to migrate. So we'll type in grant, select, insert, update, delete, show view, and lock tables on employees dot star, so, for, so all tables, and then to migration user at our wildcard address, hit enter. And then finally, we'll need to grant a set of permissions to a table called underscore VT that PlanetScale uses in order to keep things synchronized properly between your MySQL database and PlanetScale. So I'm going to type in grant, select, insert, update, create, drop, and alter on underscore VT dot star. So all tables within that specific database. And then we're going to grant this to our migration user. and hit enter. And that concludes the process to set up the database. So this way it can be migrated over to planet scale. So now let's head over to the planet scale dashboard and import this database. So I'm logged into planet scale with what would be considered a fresh account. There are no databases in this account yet. So you could step through the wizard here to explain how planet scale works, or we can create or import a database. So I'm going to click on import to import a database. If you haven't opted into the beta, you may be presented with a beta modal here. However, this account has already been opted in, so we can proceed. Now, the first section of the form asks what the name of the database will be once it's in planet scale. So we want to keep things consistent. I will type in employees to keep the name of the database as employees. And then it gives you the option to select from a number of different AWS and GCP regions. And then after that, depending on the region you've selected, you will be presented with a number of IP addresses that need to be whitelisted in the firewall. So this way, our database tool can connect to your database and properly migrate it. Configuring these specifically is outside of the scope of this video. However, traditionally, you would work with your network engineering team in order to make sure this is configured properly. So I'm going to scroll down a bit. And now we're at the portion where it's asking connection information about our specific MySQL database. So the first value is the host name. I'm going to paste in the public address for my EC2 instance. The second is the database name. So we know our database is named employees inside of the current MySQL configuration. The username is migration underscore user. And the password is our super secret secure password. If you need to, you can configure additional security settings down here to connect to the database. However, in my specific instance, I'm going to click connect to database to test the connection to our MySQL database. And then provided everything was configured properly, you should be presented with a message that says we've successfully connected to that database. And then we can click begin database import. Now the import works in three dedicated phases. The first is copying the schema and the data. So what this is going to do is create a new database within planet scale, copy your schema over and then begin migrating your data. Considering this is moving several million records over, we're going to pause the video now and wait until this process completes it before we move on to the next step. After the schema and all the data has been copied, your planet scale database will operate in what's called replica mode. And this gives you an opportunity to update connection strings wherever you need to, in order to test your application to make sure it properly works with planet scale. While in replica mode, any changes made to your original database in MySQL will be copied over to the planet scale database that's being set up for you. Once you've ensured everything in your application is working with the planet scale database, you can click enable primary mode. And what this will do is switch the roles between planet scale and your existing MySQL server. So this way, any changes made to the planet scale side will be replicated over to your MySQL database. So I'm going to go ahead and click enable primary mode. It's going to double prompt me to make sure that this is definitely something I want to do. I'll click enable primary mode again. And now you'll be granted one more opportunity to step backwards and enable replica mode again in case you run in, into any final issues. But once everything is completely said and done, you can click finish import. And this will complete the process of importing the database and disable any kind of data replication.
And now our employees database has been synchronized into PlanetScale. To reinforce this, let's actually take a look at some of the data inside of the PlanetScale database. Before I can use the console tab, we'll need to enable it in the settings on the production branch that has been created by default from the migration process. So I'll click on settings and then check the box that says allow web console access to production branches. I'll click save database settings once that is enabled. And now I'll scroll up and select the console tab. We only have one branch currently. I will connect to the main branch and then I can type in show tables. And you see, we have the same tables that existed on the MySQL server up in AWS. If I perform some of those same queries that we did earlier, like select count star from employees, we have a total of just over 300,000 rows and select star from employees limit 10 shows us that this data was successfully migrated over to planet skill from our MySQL server. After watching this video, you should have a better understanding on how to use the import tool within PlanetScale to migrate your MySQL databases into PlanetScale. For more resources on how to use PlanetScale, go to planetscale.com and check out our blog and documentation portal where we're adding new content all the time. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.